Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula when we know our solutions are going, when we have um, uh, the, the, the complex solutions. So um, basically what I have here is I have three uh, quadratic equations. And they're in different sets. And I did that on purpose because a lot of times students will you know, get a problem one way and they understand it. But then they get in a different way and they totally lose their mind of saying, what are we supposed to be doing here? So um, the basic thing we need to know is when we're solving a quadratic, um, we always want to make sure we have our quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c, set equal to 0. Okay, um, So we want to have it in this form. And when we have it in this form, uh, to, when using the quadratic formula, we have x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. All right. So the main important thing that we're going to want to do here is make sure that our equation is set equal to 0. Well, in the first example, I made this one pretty simple. You can see that it's set equal to 0. So now, the next thing I like to do here is identify our a, b, and c, where a is the coefficient of x squared, or our quadratic term, b is the coefficient of x, or our linear term, and c is going to be our constant. When you see, when there's no number in front of the x squared, then we, can, then we know that that number is going to be 1, because 1 times x squared is just going to be 1. So therefore, a equals 1, b equals negative 6, and c equals 10. Okay. So it's very, very important to make sure that we get that done. Because now, all we're going to do is plug in wherever there's an a in our formula, we're going to plug in 1. Wherever b is, we're going to plug in a negative 6. And wherever there's a c, we're going to plug in a 10. All right, so now we just type in here. So x equals the opposite of negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay. Now, I kind of used my color coding here on purpose uh, so that you can see all I did is now I plugged in wherever you saw b. I plugged in a negative 6. Wherever you saw an a, I plugged in a 1. Wherever you saw a c, I plugged in a 10. And just notice the use of my parentheses. And that's a major important thing. A lot of students want to get, you know, kind of do this a little bit quicker and do it the faster way, which of course we always want to do things quicker, right? Um, but a lot of times they make a mistake. So notice how it's minus a negative 6. I'm using those parentheses. Uh, OK, so now it just comes into simplifying. So we know um, opposite of negative 6 is going to give me a plus 6 plus or minus. The square root of negative 6 squared is going to be 36. Negative 4, uh, negative 4 times 1 uh, times 10 is going to be a negative 40. Divided by 2 times 1, which is just 2. x equals um, 36 minus 40 is going to be a negative 4. So it's going to be 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 divided by 2. Now, we know that we can't take the square root of negative 4, but we can take the square root of um, 4 and then replace the square root of negative 1 as an i. So therefore, this becomes x equals 6 plus or minus 2i divided by 2, right? Because the square root of negative 1 is i, um, and then the square root of 4 is 2. And then I can divide the 2 into both of those. So my final answer is going to be 3 plus or minus i. So x equals 3 plus or minus i. Um, and there you go. That's the next one. OK, so let's move on to the next one. y equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 13. So again, we just do the same thing. a in this case is equal to 4, b is equal to 8, and c is equal to 13. So now, um, ooh, uh, I'm not going to do all this. OK, I'll use my calculator. All right, so the next thing is, now let's go ahead and plug it in. I'm not going to do as much as I did over here. x equals um, opposite of 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus, I should use parentheses, minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times 4. Okay. It's still important, even if you're not using color coding, to always use those parentheses. Now, um, I am going to do a little work here, uh, just because I don't know 16 times 13 off the top of my head. Well, anyways, so 
The next one is x equals negative 8 plus or minus. The square root of 8 squared we know is going to be 64. And then we have negative 4 times 4 times 13. That's going to be a negative 208. <sighs> and that's all divided by uh, 8. OK, so now I need to do 64 minus 208. 64 divided by 208 is going to be 100, negative 144. x equals negative 8 plus or minus um, the square root of negative 144 divided by 8. Now again, just like we did over here, um, and if you kind of get confused on this one, uh, what we can basically do from here is, basically what I'm doing is I can't take the square root of negative 144. But what I can do is I can take the square root, um, I don't have enough space over here, I can take the square root of 144. So what I do is basically I'm taking negative 144 and I'm rewriting that as 144 times negative 1. So now the square root of 144 is going to be 12 and the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay. Um, now, I am going to erase that, but I wanted to show that to you because I didn't really explain that over there. And I know some students are at different levels, so I just want to make sure I explained it. All right, so there, for we have x equals uh, negative 8 plus or minus, plus or minus 12i, which I just already said, divided by 8. Now, unlike this problem where the 2 divided into the 6 and 2, 8 divides into negative 8, but it does not divide into 12. And that's perfectly OK. Um, I'll just simplify that. So therefore, I'm just going to have to reduce the fraction. So negative 8 divided by 8 is going to be a negative 1. Plus or minus, uh, 12 divided by 8 can be reduced to, uh, let's see, 4. So we can do 3 halves. 3 halves i. OK? All right, so let's get into the last one here. Um, again, first thing we need to do is identify our a, b, and our c. OK. So identify a, b, and c. So a equals 3. Oops. <laughs> yes. I made the mistake um, that I forgot. I am moving too quickly. My apologies. Um, on this last example, you can see that the equation was not set equal to 0, right? Well, fortunately, this problem is easy enough here um, that it's easy enough that all I simply need to do to set this equation set equal to 0, I have all of my x's on the same side. On the other side, I have y, where I want it to be 0. Well, when we're solving for the quadratic formula, we're, we're solving when y is equal to 0. So therefore, I simply can just replace the y with a 0. That one's easy enough. Now, in this equation, you can see here that it's not set equal to 0. So what I need to do then is automatically set everything to 0. So the best advice that I like to do is always make your a, always try to make your a positive. I always like a being positive. So therefore, I need to get rid of an 8x and a negative 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a negative 8x on both sides, and I'm going to add a 7 on both sides. Therefore, I obtain 3x squared minus 8x plus 7. That goes to 0. That goes to 0 equals to 0. OK, so really, the values are going to be the same, or absolute value is the same. But you can see here the signs are different. So now a equals 3, b equals negative 8, and c equals 7. Now I can go through with the quadratic formula. OK, so I have x equals. Um, so it's opposite of negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. OK, so now just go ahead and simplify. Opposite of negative 8 is going to be a positive 8 plus or minus. Let's see here, we have negative 8 squared, which is going to be 64. Minus um, hmm, 4 times 3 is 12. I don't know, 12 times 7. 12 times 5 is 60. 72, 84. Sounds about right. Yep, 84. Uh, minus 84, all divided by 6. 
Well, 64 minus 84 is going to be 20. x equals 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 divided by 6. Now, in this example, we have another issue here. Because in these two problems, we could take the square root. We just had to get rid of the negative. And then we could take the square root of 4, and we could take the square root of 144. We can't take the square root of 20. So therefore, we have to simplify this. And the best way I like to always look at simplifying is, again, so if I have negative square root of 20, um, we know we can't take the square root of a negative 1, right? Or what we want to do is basically break this up into terms we can take the square root of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times 5 times negative 1. Now, does 4 times 5 times negative 1 still give you negative 20? Yes. But what I did is, whenever you have the square root or an even root of a negative number, always take out negative 1. Because we can take the square root of negative 1 and represent that with our imaginary unit, which is i. Then for the number, that's just simplifying um, radicals. But um, so the best way I like to simplify radicals is break it up into, when, especially when you're doing square, square root, is break it up using square numbers, which in this case is 4, which is a square number. Because I can take the square root of 4, which is 2. So it's 2 square root of 5 times i. OK? Um, so now I'm going to rewrite that 2 square root of 5i. So therefore, x equals 8 plus or minus um, 2 square root of 5i all over 6. OK, well now again, 6 does not divide into both of those, but I can reduce it. So 8 over 6, I can reduce that um, as 4 thirds. And 2, 2 over 6, I can reduce as 1 third. So my final answer is 4 plus or minus the square root of 5i divided by 2, which would be 3. All right? Yes. Very good. OK. So there you go. That's your final answer, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how you solve a quadratic when your solutions are imaginary or complex. Thanks.